I'd like to take this time out to mention a milestone in somebody's fantasy career. You see, because just this last weekend, Ed accomplished something that he hasn't done since week eight of the 2016 season. Yes, Ed defeated me. So on behalf of Team Bundy, everyone here at the Recap Center, and I'm sure everybody in this league that's pulling for you, we'd like to congratulate you, Ed. This, this, this one's for you, buddy. This is your week two recap. And yes, Ed, it's been since 2016 that you haven't defeated me. Of course, you got eliminated last season by me in the second round and you lost in week 13. Go ahead and check the papers, my friend. But what I'm about to do now is I'm about to read you a list of quarterbacks. And these quarterbacks all have something in common. What these quarterbacks have in common is that they all have more points than Matthew Stafford. Alex Smith in the player pool. Case Keenum in the player pool. Tyrod Taylor in the player pool. Joe Flacco in the player pool. Andy Dalton in the player pool. Blake Bortles in the player pool. Ben Roethlisberger in the player pool. And Philip Rivers also in the player pool. This, however, has not stopped Jay from relentlessly. It's like we're all holding him back and we're like, Jay, don't do it. He's like, no, no, I don't want to fucking win. I don't want to win. So he keeps playing Matthew Stafford, who at this point of the season has amassed 30 points. Now, that may seem like it's decent, but it's only because he scored 23, uh, 23 points just this last week. And he got seven in week one with four interceptions. Somebody gets four interceptions and they're Matthew Stafford. You know, he, he's a quarterback, but he looks like he drinks too much beer. Like, it's just, it's, it's, it's not working out. And also, when you have Patrick Mahomes, what is it, uh, rolling with Mahomes, you have him on the bench. Now, this is what I, I repeat this every year. I say it all the time. I don't understand the idea of putting two quarterbacks in your team that are basically capable of doing the exact same thing, basically able to create the same amount of production because you have one quarterback at that point. You have two people who are equals in every way. These aren't, they're not people, kids. They're players, they're zeros, they're numbers. That's all they are. And if you have two quarterbacks that are pretty much capable of scoring the same amount of points, then it's just going to be you shifting them around every week nervously and saying, no, I want to put him in. Uh, no, I got to put him in because he did five more points in him. It's so stressful. And it's something that I learned years ago from doing fantasy that I'm not getting locked into that again. And I keep repeating it to you guys knowing how it just contributes to all your failed seasons. And here's Jay doing it yet again. He has Patrick Mahomes, who is the number two quarterback so far with a 28 in week one and a 38 in, uh, j uh, in week two just this week. And look, I personally wouldn't have uh, Patrick Mahomes as my as my quarterback, but I would understand that a lot more than Matthew Stafford. It's like you already understand the high and the low that he's able to create. It would not surprise you if next week Matthew Stafford scored 14 points, and it also wouldn't surprise you uh, if he scored 30. And I get that. I get the upside to it, but there's it, the, the ceiling is too, the, the floor is too low, Jay. It's too low. All you're looking at is the ceiling. You're looking at Matthew Stafford, what he's done in the past, and Megatron has a lot to do with that. He's got a lot to do with all his fantasy success. And now he doesn't have that. And you continue to put him out. Uh, unless what you're doing is just, you know, you're, you're, you're using him as a decoy. And, you know, at uh, 1255 on a Sunday, you're going to start Mahomes. I'm not sure what you're going to do. But it is a fail on your part. And it is the reason why you are 0-2. Now that I bought that up, let's get into the standing, shall we? In the Thundercat division, we have I used to run this league at 2-0 oh, 
We have Fuck You at one and one. We've got Team Bundy at one and one. And then we have Dad Bod at 0 and 2 and Thanks Killing at 0 and 2. Over on the G.I. Joe side, we have NY to, to Kali. I'm sorry, I'm not reading that right. Hold on, give me a say. NY to Cali at 2 and 0. Pineapple Jugglers at 2 and 0. Uh, the Green Ranger at 1 and 1. Jego Papi at 1 and 1. And uh, Ewok Rape at 0 and 2. I'm starting to feel like Andy's flirting with me, and that's why he named his his team Jego Papi, because he just wants me to keep saying that. And I'll keep saying it, Andy. I'll keep saying that. Jego Papi, Jego Papi. Okay, so uh, this, even though you have teams at 2 and 0, What's great about this is that nobody's running away with it, you know, much to, you know, what would surprise Ed and and Dro, who probably think, you know, that they're already expecting their belts already. But what's interesting to note is that Ed, with the most points in the season so far, with 228, Pedro right behind him with 217, but the lowest scoring team is Andy at 151 so that just means that there is a 77 point difference between Andy and Ed that can be you can gain that in a week you know you can gain that in two weeks so this season more than any other season and I should dig in the papers for that more than any other season I think points are being scored all over the board I think mostly you've got bigger deficits at this point so I would say that the lower end teams, and look, I got 155, you know, so I know I'm not performing at my best. Um, uh, Even the teams that are scoring low are still right there with the higher teams, so everything is still within reach, and you motherfuckers aren't running away with anything, especially because of the fact that you guys manage the way that you manage, so you know you're really not running away with anything. Uh, I want to do something a bit different here, something that I've never done here at the Recap Center. And I want to uh, basically just read off the acquisitions, uh, the the recent league activity here um, for the the, the pickups this week. And uh, let's start with us, obviously, 4.30 a.m. on Tuesday, September 19th. We had uh, Paul dropping Jack Doyle and picking up Eric uh, Ebron. I guess uh, Paul wants to make some... uh, some moves as far as uh, what the fuck is Eric? I'm like, oh, what fucking, but oh, okay, he's a tight end, whatever. The tight ends are interchangeable. Uh, Jago Papi decided to drop Legatron, who basically did nothing last week. Maybe he got injured because he put a big fat goose egg up and he picks up Graham Gano. Bundy makes a very strategic, a very intelligent move by picking up Deshaun Jackson, who is the number two ranked wide receiver, over a hundred. Uh, uh, over 100 yards in the first two games, two touchdowns in game one and one touchdown in game two, uh, 26 points and 18 points. I got to make my moves. I got to storm on the bench just in case you fuckers want to actually make some trades, even though that's probably not going to happen. We also have Jago Papi picking up the Titans. Steven, who gives a fuck? Nobody cares about defenses. We also have Turtle Power uh, uh, picking up the the, the the Cowboys defense. Turtle Power dropping... Uh, John Ross and picking up Corey Clement, who had a pretty good week too, with uh, with um, six runs, thirty yards, one touchdown, and fourteen points. We have Eric with a lot of activity here, dropping uh, Jameis uh, Jameson Cower, picking up Ryan Fitzpatrick, who is the number one quarterback at this point of the season. I think it's pretty safe to say that Jameis Winston doesn't have a fucking job, at least for for the next two to three months he doesn't have a job if the bucks keep winning then fitzpatrick is going to be the quarterback there but we all know that this is kind of what he does he you know he makes a good first couple of impressions and then he he falls uh towards mediocrity uh eric also dropping jordy nelson who i do remember me laughing at him in the draft room when he picked up jordy nelson and of course, Jordy Nelson with three catches in week one, two catches in week two, amassing just five points in total. He is a fucking loser, and he is no longer on Ewok rape. Eric instead picking up Antonio Callaway, who got a touchdown this last week. Uh, also picking up Mohamed Sanu and dropping Jarvis Allen. And to finish out the acquisitions, uh... oh, wait, look at that. No, Paul dropping. So Paul basically wasted 
ba- uh, he basically wasted his acquisition here by dropping Eric Ibram and um, picking up Jesse James. I mean, it really doesn't matter. I mean, just as long as Paul doesn't, uh, you know, panic in the middle of the season as he normally does, he's going to have more than enough waiver pickups, um, you know, to justify his uh, his two and ten existence. So let's take a look at those week two scores. We had I used to run this league, defeating Team Bundy, 104 to 67. Fuck you, defeating Dad Bod, 103 to 95. Uh, the Green Ranger uh, with the highest score of the week, defeating Thanks Killing, 125 to 93. Pineapple Jugglers victorious once again. Against Diego Papi, 77 to 53. Eric uh, defeating NY2. You guys got to really clarify what this, like, I'm not reading this name properly. Nye to Cat. That's how it is. Nye to Cat uh, to Kali. Nye to Kali. Nye to Kali wins. 117 268 and of course the Tito award so deservingly goes to Andy who only managed to score 53 points and as I did last week and I will continue to do for the duration of the season I will let you know who the high performer is on whatever team it is and this week it's shared between Matt Ryan and Todd Gurley at 29 points apiece Todd Gurley of course playing for Nicole and uh, Matt Ryan playing for Fuck You. So let's move on to those week three matchups. We've got Team Bundy up against the O and 2 Thanks Killing. Hello, Paul. This is a familiar position for us, huh? I lose. Kind of, you know, it kind of hurts. You lose. It can really determine where your season is definitely headed. It's, it's definitely headed down there. You know, Paul, I've got my arm around you, just like Agent Smith had Neo. Just when the train was coming, he was like, you know what that is, Mr. Anderson? That's the sound of inevitability. That's all it is, Paul. It's coming. That train is coming. That 0-3 train, which then eventually you can catch the 0-7 train. And then after that, you can transfer it to the, you know, to the 0-10. You're terrible, Paul. Everything is your fault. Trump, everything. Everything is your fault. Uh, Nye Kali at 2-0 and o, facing the 0-2 dad bod. This, this is a pivotal week for you, Jay. This is a pivotal week. Of course, I told you I would dig into the papers. It wasn't as, uh, what, wasn't as interesting as we both thought it was. Uh, you, you haven't been Owen, Owen, whatever for the past few seasons. I think last season you were, uh, you, you, you lost, you won the season before. I'm sorry. You won like week two or something like that. It wasn't as interesting as I thought. So I'm not going to bother mentioning it to you, but this is a very, very pivotal week for you, my friend. I mean, if you go Owen three, I don't think your squad is very strong, especially if you keep making stupid decisions like playing, uh, Matthew Stafford here. Uh, let's see if you get some fucking production out of your number one wide receiver here. This fucking uh, this this gold colored asshole. He looks like an like an Oscar with a with a helmet on. Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, we also have fuck you going up against Ed uh, Diego Papi against Ewok Rape. And to finish out the week two games, uh, the week three games, we have the Gonzalez brothers going up against each other. Orlando at one and one, and Pineapple Jugglers at two and zero. Oh. This can be a very historic season if Joe opens up at 3-0. This, of course, will mean that when Joe gets the second pick in the 2019 season, he can feel a little better about his first few weeks of the season. There's not as much pressure to win because at least he did better this season, you know? So, those were your matchups. That was your week two recap. And as always... May your quarterbacks get hurt before they leave the uh, blah, 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 blah. May your quarterbacks get hurt before they leave the locker room. May your running backs pull their hamstrings and may your wide receivers get arrested for marijuana possession. Go fuck yourselves.